Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be having a look at creating a um, peer to peer link with Wi Fi with a low cost solution from TP Link. So, this is the, um, TW, uh, it's the TLWA1201. Um, it's an AC1200 Wi Fi access point. It's capable of doing WPA3, although the system we're connecting to is only capable of doing WPA2. So, we'll show you the settings for uh, getting this connected and extending your network. So ideal solutions for this are you've got a garden room or a garden office and you want to use a network down there um, but you haven't got cabling that you can run down. So this is to the building. So this is a low cost solution of being able to extend your network. So we take our, um, our access point and we are going to set this so that it becomes a... Um, a receiver for our standard Wi-Fi. So our Wi-Fi is currently provided by, um, we're using BT Whole, Whole Home Hub, that does 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz um, connections. So the setup of the TP-Link router, we're gonna be using our PoE injector and we've got that plugged in and switched on. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to connect our TP link access point and we're going to plug that into the PoE port on the power injector and then we're going to turn it on and then you should see the lights come on like that so that's now in power up mode while that's powering up, we then take our network cable. This is from our um, network switch. So this is what this is doing. This is gonna join the access point to our local network. And you need to do this to do the initial um, setup. You'll know that the, uh, the device is booted up when you see all of the lights come on. So at the moment, there we go, we've got power, we've got our ethernet, and we've got our 2.4 and our five gigahertz connections. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna find the access point on the network. So we've got our laptop that is, uh, that is currently joined to our Wi-Fi network. So let's now use IP scanner to see if we can find the device on the network. We're gonna do IP scan and we're gonna open our scanner tool. This has picked up our local network, so we're just gonna click on start. That's gonna do a ping sweep on the network. And we wanna scroll down. It's gonna pick up a DHCP lease, so we're gonna scroll down to our leases. Okay, and here's our TLWA1201, so that's 192.168.10.179, so we want to connect to that. 192.168.10.179. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you for a, to set a new password. So we're going to do that. Okay, and this is going to log us into the wizard. So we want to be using what's called the client mode. So we're going to select client mode. We're going to click on next. We're going to have our time zone set correctly. Click on next. And then it's going to go off and find the 2.4 gigahertz network. And we're going to select, we've got three hubs. Uh, three home hubs, so it's picking up the closest one. So we're going to select our closest one. And we're going to enter our passphrase for the Wi-Fi network. We're going to click on OK. That's then going to go off and scan for the 5 gigahertz network. And again, we're going to use our strongest network that we've got. And we're going to enter the passphrase for that one. We're going to say OK to that. 
and then we're going to click on save. Now what this is going to do, this is then going to reboot the access point with all of the settings. Now because this is going to, now going to be powering up in um, client mode, what we want to do is we want to disconnect from our Wi-Fi. So we're going to do that, we're going to switch off our Wi-Fi. And then we're going to take our network cable that's directly connected into our little USB-C hub here. And we're going to unplug from our main network, from the access point, and we're going to plug directly, directly into the access point there. And as you can see here, it's identifying. That is absolutely fine. That's connected. And we've got a finish button here, which we wouldn't get if we were joined to our Wi-Fi network. It wouldn't find it because this is now set up as a client mode. So once, you're, uh, once you click on finish, it's going to direct you to the linkap.net. Um, which is basically the login again. So we're going to log back in because there's a few more settings that we need to change. So we're going to log in with the password that we set earlier. And there we can see how we're connected. Our main router slash Wi-Fi access point. And then um, we've got our peer-to-peer um, -peer link with our WA1201 and then we're connecting with our client. So the first thing we want to do is go to internet. We want to make sure that this is set to dynamic IP so that it will always work on um, um, on your local network. The device itself will pick up an IP address from your router. I mean as client mode um, that automatically disables the DHCP server so we can go in here and we can see that this is actually greyed out. We cannot change it um, because we're in client mode. And then probably the most important functions is if you've just got your single 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks um, to stop anything else from um, accessing it and to improve the security, you want to tick the box that says lock to AP on both of them. So what this does basically, it only allows um, your device, your single access point that you've previously connected to to join this so you you always set this if you've got a single access point it improves the security and stops anything else from getting in there and um, we're going to leave it WPA WPA2 which is absolutely fine we're going to click on save and that has now locked it to the access point you can change this obviously by clicking on the Wi-Fi uh, scanner tools and rejoining a new Wi-Fi network Next thing we want to do is we want to go to our system settings and we want to go to our time and language options and we want to select daylight saving mode. So we're going to click on save and that will ensure that the system is always uh, picking up its correct time. That's it. What you can do here, as you can see, we are connected with a single device. So we can, if we want to, add a network switch and add multiple devices onto that. So let's go ahead and do that. So here now we've got a five port network switch. So what I want to do is I'm going to disconnect from the LAN on the access point so I will lose my network connection on here and then I'm going to take this network cable plug it into the uplink port and then I'm going to connect that back into the uh, PoE device or the sorry the uh, injector connecting it to the LAN so what we've got now is our access point talking to our other Wi-Fi access point and um, the connection for this device is now going into the network switch. I can then take another network cable and I can plug a device into the network switch and plug that into my PC. So my PC should now get a connection 
So I can close this down. So as you can see here, we are connected via the network switch and you can connect um, multiple devices into the network switch. So in theory, you could plug in another um, Wi-Fi access point into here to give you uh, coverage. And this is a good way of um, providing it's got good uh, Wi-Fi coverage. This will happily pick up the signal from your access point and you can then use it to connect multiple devices via uh, what we call a, a, a Wi-Fi bridge to your main network. So let's now have a look at the throughput to see what we're getting. If we go to Google, we'll just stick in our speed test. I'm expecting we should get around about 200 megabits a second, which we are. So we're getting the full throughput. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that you've got good internet coverage from your from your main access point to the device itself. Obviously, the further away the access points are, then the lower the throughput. But this is a great way of, say you've got um, um, a garden office and you've got an access point in your home that's close to the back of the house and you want to get your Wi-Fi or your network extended down to your garden room without the need for cables, then this is a good way of doing this. So that's all there is to it, basically. Um, we're showing you how you can create a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi connection from any, any Wi-Fi access point. So say, for instance, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, we are using um, a BT whole home hub mesh system. This TP-Link happily joins the Wi-Fi network on that. You can lock it to whatever AP you want. You can lock the 2.4 gigahertz connection to one AP, you can lock, lock the five gigahertz connection to a different AP um, and still get your full throughput. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.